Should you set highly ambitious goals for your team members? Or should you stick to more conservative, safe, realistic goals? How could you find the right balance between growing your team by challenging them with objectives, but at the same time protecting them from overwork and burnout? In this video, I'm going to show you the five crucial steps of goal setting that will help you create this very delicate balance. Last Saturday evening, I was sitting in this very chair and I was in tears with sheer frustration, overwork and overwhelm. Because after months of hard work, it was becoming increasingly clear that no matter how hard I've been trying, I'm not going to reach my quarterly OKR objective. At this point, you might be thinking, you poor woman, you must have a horrible boss setting these unrealistic expectations. But you would be wrong in assuming that. I'm the founder of Blueberry, and these quarterly goals I set for myself. Because it seems that I don't need a tough boss to push myself into overwork or overwhelm. I'm doing this for myself. Why am I telling you this? Well, because having coached many leaders working in startup and scale-up companies, I find that I'm no exception. Ambitious managers in such companies set themselves and their team members so-called hairy audacious goals, and then they just push, push and push. They are stressed, they are overwhelmed, and they often end in burnout, and they also drag their teammates, team members into burnout too. So would it not be so much better for our well-being if we stuck to those conservative save goals? Well, it's not so simple. Research suggests that People actually find a joy in challenges. They even prefer ambitious goals to safer goals. It's just that many just sometimes set the bar too high and they crush their team members while everybody's trying to achieve those objectives. So how could you find the right balance between challenging and growing your team members, but also saving them from burnout? Here are the five crucial steps I suggest you follow. Number one, let people set their own objectives. Let them find the link between the company-wide goal and their own personal objective. At this point, you might be worried. What if they go for the easy, for the safe option? I wouldn't worry too much because the likelihood is that you're surrounded by ambitious high achievers just like you are. People are very open to challenge themselves as long as there is an emotionally safe environment. And this brings us to the second point. Number two, make sure that those objectives are not linked to compensation. Because the moment objectives are linked to money, people will be naturally motivated to stick to the safe option. So as much as possible, decouple objectives and key results from bonuses. Point number three, be your team members goal setting coach. Support them, but at the same time challenge them. Maybe you've got a colleague, let's call him Pete, who's a bit of a safe player. You might go, well, Pete, I've noticed that in the last few quarters, you set your goals pretty safe. What could be the next step for you? What could be a bit more challenging, even a bit scary? And how could I support you in setting the bar somewhat higher, upping your game? At the same time, you might have another colleague with very different issues. Maybe he tends to overcommit himself. You might go and say, well, Joseph, Last quarter, I think we can both agree that it's been a very, very stressful period for you. There were lots of uh, over hours and weekend work. And this goal seems to be very ambitious too. How could we make it a bit more sustainable? So support your colleagues at the goal setting stage, 
but also support them all the way through the period, monitoring their workload, making sure that you're there for them as their goal setting coach. Number four, don't punish, but always reflect. So what happens when somebody in your team doesn't reach their goal? Your answer to this question is critical because your reaction to mistakes and failure will ultimately determine whether your team members would be willing to put themselves on the line in the next period too, or whether they will retreat into their shells. Make sure that there are no negative consequences, no embarrassment for anybody who doesn't reach their goal. But at the same time, insist on reflection at a team level and at individual level. And of course, learn from those mistakes. And finally, don't forget to celebrate because it's just too easy to jump straight to the next period without stopping for a bit to recognize and appreciate what we've achieved. It's your job as a manager of your team to establish those rituals for celebration, to allow people to pat themselves on the back and enjoy their success together. So take an honest look at your goal setting practices as a manager. Do you allow your team members to set their own objectives? Do you as much as possible separate objectives from bonuses and compensation in general? Do you act as a goal setting coach, supporting your team members all the way through the quarter? Do you make sure people reflect when something goes wrong, but at the same time, never punish, never allow any negative consequences? And finally, do you make sure that the team stops to celebrate their successes at the end of every quarter? I'm inviting you to revamp your goal setting practices in order to help your people grow, help the business grow, but without crushing your team members.